Hello again and welcome to the fourth in our series of short videos about careers uh, in the field of patents for uh, engineers and scientists. Uh, my name again is Mark Dighton. I'm uh, the Administrative Director of the Patent Office Exam Course for PLI, stands for Practice Law Institute, but we're generally known by PLI. We've been in business almost 100 years, nonprofit organization, uh, doing education and training for attorneys uh, and related professionals, and I run one of its biggest programs, one sort of its landmark courses uh, in uh, passing the patent office's registration exam, which we'll talk more about later in the next video. For now, we're just talking about, you know, the $64,000 question, what's the difference between an attorney and an agent? Um, and as a result of that, talking about engineers going to law school and what that's like and whether that's a good idea, you'll decide for yourself, but I'll explain to you what it's like and you'll decide whether it's right for you or not. Um, let's just get one thing out of the way. First and foremost, no one pays you more money just to be nice to you. Uh, attorneys work harder and have a lot more responsibility, um, and that's partially why they're making the big bucks, um, at least bigger bucks than the agents. Agents could be very well compensated in this field. As an agent, you'll probably be making, you know, depending on on the circumstances, ten to twenty thousand um, uh, dollars more per year than you would as an engineer. Or scientists, you know, in the same market, um, with the same degrees and all that kind of stuff. There's not a huge um, bonus in um, uh, being an agent over just being an engineer. It's really more kind of the quality of the work. You know, is it the kind of work you would like to do? You know, rather than writing code your whole life, would you rather kind of sit back and look at what? other people have accomplished and help them get a patent on it. Um, um, and that's really kind of exciting, invigorating work, not for everybody, but for the people it's right for. It's very rewarding, interesting, fun work. Um, um, you know, but, you know, as an agent, the nice thing is that, you know, the client is going to call you at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night or on the weekends or while you're on vacation to demand you drop everything in order to do something um, they, they, want you to do. Um, now the attorney who takes that call may eventually end up calling an agent, calling you the next day to actually get you to do the work, but they're going to spend that time on the phone with the client trying to convince them that what they're um, planning is, is ludicrous and not going to work. <laughs> and they may well say, do it anyway, and that's the way uh, the business goes. Um, uh, so, you know, I know plenty of people who are uh, successful as agents their whole careers probably would make good attorneys, but decided that for whatever reason, uh, being an agent is better for them and they are happy doing that their whole life. So rest assured on that front. Um, uh, attorneys are often expected to kind of see the bigger picture. Um, they're expected to not just know the technology, but understand the bigger business picture. Uh, who are the competitors? What technologies are they using? Um, uh, what do we have to kind of develop to be competitive in this market? Or, you know, are we on the verge of some kind of technological breakthrough, which may, if we handle it correctly, you know, really uh, uh, make us the, the leader? Um, uh, agents are expected um, to kind of know more about the technology and maybe only the technology. Now, I'll say I have, I know agents who have a very long history um, with a particular technology or with a particular client who may be called in for those kinds of meetings to decide, you know, whether we're going to go get a patent or not on something. Um, um, so it does happen, especially if you've got some sort of social skills. Um, but really, that's the kind of thing that attorneys are generally expected to do. Uh, and often, um, attorneys will be assigned the sort of groundbreaking, you know, new technology that may completely remake um, someone's business. Now, again, they may go to an agent to actually do the technical world work, you know, help understanding and drafting the, the patent application. Um, but, um, you know, the law firm at least will kind of put an attorney in charge as a way of showing to the client, look, we know this is a big deal. We're taking this one very, you know, extra uh, seriously. Um, uh, our attorneys, as we discussed before, uh, will likely be called in if the patent office is being particularly difficult uh, about a particular invention. Um, if the, you know, the examiner at the patent office won't hear reason on something and it has to become more aggressive, um, that's what attorneys are by, um, uh, you know, definition, uh, you know, either by uh, personality traits or by training, 
uh, trained to be more sort of aggressive, more assertive. Um, attorneys will handle, you know, kind of any licensing of the patent, um, any litigation that arises in the patent. They may have uh, engineers, scientists, you know, agents help them in the case, but they're really responsible for handling those things first and foremost. Um, uh, you know, attorneys are, are going to be expected to have a more professional demeanor and, and more social skills. Um, it, you know, I guess if you don't want to wear a suit to work every day, you should be an agent, not an attorney. Because attorneys, that was, it changes from firm to firm, but attorneys mostly are expected to be, you know, wearing a suit every day. Um, uh, often we see now, the, a very common thing is for firms to try people out as agents, and if they are successful as agents, and show an ability to see the bigger picture, um, to be more assertive, more aggressive. You know, got appropriate demeanor and social skills may send them to law school. Um, you know, pay for you to go to law school. That's hard. Uh, I, I, I mean, um, but you know, there's no other way you're going to graduate from law school essentially uh, debt free. Um, you're going to have to go, to, and only certain law schools have have a you know a, a, an evening program. Um, so you won't get to the option to go to some of the best law schools. But you know, kind of, you already got a job in any major city. There's going to be at least one law school that has a night program, uh, and that's going to be fine for you. You're going to use, lose four years of your life to that. You know, law school is normally three years full time. You know, part time, you're going at night and on weekends. It's going to be um, four years. You'll lose basically four years of your life to this. Um, you're going to be working during the day uh, and doing law school in evenings and weekends. But again, the only way you'll ever graduate from law school debt free, most likely. Um, you know, but if you want, and especially if you can afford, you know, get a good scholarship, uh, maybe you can quit the firm, uh, devote yourself to law school um, for three years full time with the knowledge that there will likely be a job waiting for you at the end of the three years. Maybe with the firm you quit. Um, so that works out well. You just got to figure out what's right for you, given your other responsibilities, given your, you know, ability to handle stress, uh, given your financial wherewithal. Um, so let's talk about going to law school. Uh, if you decide that's right for you, here's the, the factors you should consider. One of the things, you're in a particularly opportune time in that almost every law in the school in the country wants engineers and scientists. Uh, and, you know, are willing to often give them good scholarships. When I started, there were only really six patent law schools. Um, and nobody else was interested. It was just considered too marginal a field, just wasn't worth worrying about. But now pretty much everybody uh, is interested in getting into this field, getting students who are appropriate to this. Um, uh, they know that's, you know, this is where the world is going. And, and those are where the, you know, especially the well-paying jobs are. Um, so, you know, uh, when you're taking the LSAT, um, um, you know, first of all, you should take the LSAT seriously. Um, the law schools talk about, you know, looking at the bigger picture, the whole person, your essays, all that kind of stuff. But especially since the U.S. News and World Report rankings became such a big deal, I won't say it's only about, but it's mostly about your LSAT score. Don't cut any cor corners on the LSAT. If there's anything I would have done differently if I could go back, you know, 40 years ago to when I was first planning going to law school, I would have tried harder at the LSAT. Go take a course. Take it seriously. Take the LSAT several times uh, if you have to. Now, the good thing is that a number of law schools, I think it's now up to 20 something, um, but that's only a tenth of the law schools in the country, but some very big name law schools, I think Harvard, are willing to take the GREs. What does that tell you? That tells you they're looking for engineers and scientists who might be put off by the LSAT because it's so much about kind of logic and words and writing and stuff and are more going to be more comfortable with, with the GRE. Um, I'm not really sure how that works yet. I don't think anybody really knows how that works yet. Um, but, you know, maybe you should consider foregoing the LSAT if you know you can get a, a good GRE score. And I'd say, with some limitations, don't worry too much about your GPA. Uh, any school that's serious about wanting engineers will understand that the grading curve is much harder for engineering and science students than it is for liberal arts majors. So they're not going to worry as much. I mean, you're still going to have a pretty good GPA, but, you know, 
they're going to be much more demanding of liberal arts majors as to whether they have, you know, a good GPA. Engineers, science, as long as you've got a fairly good GPA, you got a degree, that's probably good enough, depending on uh, which um, law schools you're talking about. Um, uh, once you get to law school, uh, keep in mind that the thinking that law school will require of you and will try to instill into you uh, and judge you on uh, is a very different kind of thinking from your science or engineering background. Um, you probably came from a discipline where there is an equation, a formula, a right answer. Law school will purposefully be about the things for which there are no right answers. Things that can be argued either way and the task, your goal, is to be able to show that you can argue either way if you need to, to reach whatever conclusion your client needs. <coughs> Sorry. Law school is much more of a kind of show your workplace. I mean, I know that's an issue uh, with a lot of engineering and science students too, but really kind of law school is all about show your work and nothing else. There often is no right answer that your professor is looking for out there. They just want to know that no matter what argument you're trying to make, there is a logical flow to it that logically leads to whatever conclusion you've been assigned or, you know, um, which you've decided um, you're going to pursue. So again, I hope that's some basic ideas of, of how law school is and how you should get into law school. Um, if you uh, have any uh, further questions, you can always email me at mdighton, M-D-I-G-H-T-O-N, at P-L-I dot E-D-U, and I'll be happy to help you sort those issues out. Um, if you're still um, interested, you're thinking of maybe going to law school, I will tell you that one of the most important, one of the best things you can do at this time uh, in the job market, in the history of this profession, is to take the exam before you go to law school. We'll talk about more that more in the next lecture, but you know, I will tell you that taking the exam before you go to law school will put you on a career trajectory that pretty much nobody else at your law school is going to be able to compete with. And I would highly recommend it. it, it, it if you understand that, you think you're going to law school, I'd really recommend you listen to the following lecture, which is on taking the Patent Office's registration exam. And I'll explain to you how that works and how to study for it uh, and a little bit more about why it'll be worth it. Okay? Thanks.